cleaning fish tanks is very similar to cleaning the floor uh, when you have the right fish tank and there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, welcome to the weekly update. As you can see, uh, the big tank is going home to its new home and uh, Hayden is busy. Well, Hayden's busy. Um, as you can see over here, the pond both sides now, all the water, but right now it has nothing in it. It has no salt, it has no uh, no buffers to make it fresh, so uh, we're getting very close to seeing what it's going to become. And you guys out there are slowly helping us make that decision. Is it going to be salt water? Is it going to be fresh water? And what did we get in this week? Now on to the update. Hi, it's Kevin here. I'm here to show you some of the highlights of what I got in. The best of the best of what I got in this week. But before we get into that, look around and see all the new ornaments. We got a whole lot of new aquarium ornaments and decorations for your freshwater tanks. A lot of different ideas that you can start incorporating into your scheme. You got a lot of different colors and a lot of different styles. You could actually go with some motifs with skulls and you could go with Egypt. You could go with Star Wars even. We got in a nice looking batch of red tailed blue Colombian tetras. These are one of my favorite fish to use as a cycle fish because they can handle the ammonia spike and everything that goes on with the newly established tank and ride the cycle out for you. Also great for color. Check out this guy. This guy is a special order but as you can see by my hand how big he actually is. This is a watermelon Flacostomus. These guys can actually get up to 16 inches. This guy was a special order. He's an example though of what I can get for you. We can also get them in smaller sizes sometimes as available. Another cool imported Flacostomus we got in this week. We got in the chocolate zebra Flacostomus. Really cool little omnivorous Flacostomus. These guys won't get usually over 5 inches in length, so they'd be suitable for a smaller tank even, maybe about 30 gallons or 30 to 40 gallons. We got in some really cool looking candy cane tetras. These are one of my favorite community fish. They could also be used to cycle a new tank. They do best in groups of five or more because they're a shoaling fish. We've got plenty of them because they're one of Richard's favorite fish. We get in some cute gold dwarf honey grommies. These guys seldom reach over to maybe up to two and a half inches maximum. I've never really seen them even two inches long come to think of it though. They stay relatively small. They would do really well and even as small as a 10 gallon tank. Really good community fish. On the African cichlids, we got in some really nice looking lemon yellow Labetochromus. These guys I actually got from a local breeder, so they're tank raised. One of the best Mabunas for color. Really cool African cichlid. This is another rare find that I got in this week. These are albino red empress African cichlids. They are a Lake Malawi cichlid. They are a type of Haplochromus, which would be totally fine to put in with your peacocks and whatnot. Really, really cool fish, and you don't usually see these in the albino form. On the larger side, we got in a nice looking red tail cap fish that was traded in. This guy is about 8 inches or so, but he is still so a baby. This is a fish that if you're going to keep in an aquarium, you need to make sure you've got an aquarium large enough to house him properly, because this fish can get in excess of 3 feet in the wild large aquarium is a must and if you've got a thin glass aquarium he may break it as an adult not for beginners easy to keep and awesome for color we've got in some assorted platies that just look awesome this week great variety of color on these guys and actually these guys can hybridize with the sword tail live bearing fish as well in fact they got a lot of the different color morphs of the sword tails by breeding the sword tails in with the platies to get the color we got in some really nice looking Siamese algae eaters. These are great algae scavengers, often kept in planted aquariums. They do best in schools though, if you watch how they shoal together, they like to be in groups of five or more. And they do an awesome job on the algae, usually in most cases leaving the plants alone. I noticed when I was at the Georgia Aquarium, this is the fish that they were using predominantly for algae control in all of their planted tanks. 
One cute little oddball I got in this week. I got in some nice looking peacock gudgeon gobies. These look really nice. These guys would do fine in a smaller aquarium. In any community aquarium with no problem. They will scavenge to a degree, but they usually prefer dried prepared food such as flakes, maybe small pellets, supplement it with some frozen brine shrimp or frozen mini blood worms. I think my favorite freshwater plant this week definitely has got to be this diamond Ludwigia that we got in. Fairly easy to do, but to keep those bright reds in it, you're definitely going to want to monitor your iron level as well as your KH level. We got in a lot of nice looking betas this week, but this is my particular favorite that we got in this week. This is a black orchid half moon. Really, really awesome color, really awesome finish on this fish. Hey guys, Hey here. So today I'm going to be showing you a bunch of different types of corals and all the cool corals we've been getting in lately. A lot of it is on sale. So if you're looking for some good, cheap corals, come check us out. Let's go take a look and see what we got. Alright guys, so here we have a nice green octospawn in the Euphelia family. They can be pretty easy to care for, medium light, medium flow. If you're looking for a decent, cool Euphelia we don't get in often, definitely come check out the octospawn. Oh, there's two. And here's another octospawn that's slightly different colors. It's not showing up on the camera, but it's got kind of a goldish, orangish hue to it. So if you're looking for another octospawn, come check it out. Alright, and here's another type of euphilia. Here's a torch. They can be a little more difficult to care for. They can be a little finicky. Um, they like lower nitrates, medium flow to high flow, medium light to high light. So if, you, if you've had experience with Euphelia before, definitely come check them out. And here we have a blue tip torch, which is also very cool. Alright, and here we have a couple different types of rock flowers, different colors. Very good beginner coral. They don't move a whole lot like your normal bubble tips and long tentacle anemones. So if you're looking for an anemone but don't want the heartache of an anemone, moving all over the place, stinging all your corals, eating your fish. Definitely check out the rock flowers. Alright, and here we have a combo rock of different types of mushrooms, zoanthids, flower pot coral, it's even a candy cane on there. A bunch of different stuff, so if you're a little more experienced and want to add a bunch of color to your tank at the same time, but don't want to get a bunch of small frags, these combo rocks are definitely worth it, so come check them out. Alright, and here we have some fuzzy green mushrooms. Super easy to care for, super beginner friendly, and they also offer a lot of different colors. Here is obviously just the green, but if you're looking for a super easy coral to care for, very beginner friendly, the fuzzy mushroom is definitely one you'd be looking at. Alright, and here we have a bunch of different assorted frags, all the way from zoanthids, mushrooms, to bird's nest, or acropora, SPS, and everybody in this tank is 30 or 5 for 100, so if you're looking for a bargain, just kind of want to come and pick and choose, come check these guys out, there's a lot of different stuff in here. What up, fishy friends? This week's saltwater shipment is mega cool. I uh, got in a lot of things that I've never ordered, I got in a lot of things that I only get once in a blue moon, just truly spectacular specimens. Um, even Chuck said my order this week was super cool, so um, pat something back to me. Um, anyway, uh, let's go take a look at some of the truly phenomenal fish that I've got in for you right now. Look at this spectacular specimen. I swear, I've almost never seen a fish this beautiful in my entire life. This is an orange spot rabbit fish. This is the largest one. This is a trade-in. I cannot order anything this size. And he does have one eye. That's why that eye looks like that. But he's apparently lived that way his whole life. And he does great. He eats clams on the half shell, and he eats crab clusters, and he eats seaweed, and he eats mice shrimp. And he's got the best cute little puppy dog personality. He's always right at the front of the glass always wanting to see what's going on. Man, this fish is beautiful. And this is larger than what they typically say they max out at. So 
This is a truly rare rabbit fish. So since this is a rabbit fish, I am gonna point out the fact that they are venomous. And on this guy, it's very easy to see. Look at those spines. Look at those, he is showing them off. Those are where the venom is going to come from. Again, with your rabbit fish and fox faces and things like that, the venom is not like getting bitten by a venomous snake where you have to go to the hospital to get anti-venom. This guy, when he, if he were to sting you, is gonna be more like a wasp or a yellow jacket sting. Again, run your hand under super hot water and then take some Benadryl and monitor it, but you should be fine. God, I just, I, I stare at him all day long. He's so beautiful. Isn't he beautiful? Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So this is a Melanuris wrasse. But this is more of like a super male Melanuris wrasse. This is the first time Hayden and I have seen one like this. Its colors and markings are more spectacular than the regular males, if that's even possible. It looks like he has gold highlights on his back. Melanuris wrasses are... Chuck's favorite wrasse, or at least one of them, and it's one of our favorite wrasses to put inside of aquariums, whether they be reef tanks or fish only. For real, it looks like he has gold flakes on his back. This, this, this super male Melanuris wrasse is truly spectacular. I've never had one like this, and I don't know if I ever will again. So if you're in the market for a Melanuris wrasse, either for a reef tank or a fish only, this guy is going to be the perfect one to come scoop up. All right guys, in this tank, I have got four different fish that I would like to point out. First and foremost is this beautiful little angel right here. This is the flame angel. It is another dwarf angelfish species, so it's not going to get all that much larger than what you see here. About the um, same size as a coral beauty, you know, five to six inches or so. So your flame angels, again, are not, I would never call an angel reef safe, but this guy, like your coral beauty, is gonna be one of the most reef safe angels you can have. And it's one of the most sought after angelfish species in the saltwater aquarium trade as well. I, I don't get them in very often, they're kinda hard to get. This guy right here is super cool. This is your Aptasia eating file fish. So Aptasia, which is the glass anemone, is a pest in your tank and we don't want those. This guy will actually eat them and you can see their biggest defense mechanism in the wild is their camouflage because even against that plastic plant, he was kind of camouflaged behind there. But these guys are great. They are not aggressive at all. They kind of just hang out by themselves, do a really good job and will do some work for you. So those guys are awesome. Next up is this little dude right here. This is a fox face, and this is a little baby. So fox faces, I always like to point out that they are venomous. Their spines on the top and the bottom contain venom. Now, if you ever get stuck by them, just run your arm under some hot, hot water and take some Benadryl, and you'll be totally fine. Fox faces are great. A lot of people have them in their reef tanks, even though they are deemed reef safe with caution, because some have been known to go after some coral. Fox faces are also an incredible algae eater for your saltwater aquariums. Last but not least is the actual candy striped hogfish. This is a true candy striped hogfish, and it does look significantly different than the red cigar wrasse, which is what came in when I ordered this guy the first time. Candy striped hogfish, they only get about six inches. They are typically pretty reef safe. Very rarely do they ever go after your inverts or anything like that. And especially a guy this size, he is not gonna go after anything. This guy is peaceful. He is super active, super beautiful, awesome um, personalities of this guy. I was looking for another word for peaceful because I already said that. But all in all, this is a spectacular fish. The first time I've ever been able to order it in the store and actually got one. So definitely take him home along with all of the other kiddos in this tank. All right, y'all, y'all know I gotta point out my triggers. This is a Picasso trigger. These guys are another larger, uh, a larger trigger, um, getting at least a foot in length, so another, definitely a six foot tank for this guy. He can be one of the more aggressive triggers, so I would always recommend adding this guy as one of your last fish in your aquarium, uh, just to make sure that that aggression level could be cut down. This guy is definitely made for a fish only tank. No invertebrates, crab, snails, and shrimp. 
their teeth in the front of their mouths are designed to crack open shells to eat the crabs and the snails, as well as the shells on the shrimp as well. Now, like puffers, these guys have their teeth that are ever growing. They never stop. So feeding them things like clams on the half shell to help them wear down their teeth are going to be an absolutely essential part of this trigger fish's diet. Back by popular demand are the monodactylus, or known as the monos. So the monos I've been getting typically is like that little dude right there. Take a look at these absolute giants. Look at these monsters. They will get much larger than this, but for what I've been able to order you guys so far, these are awesome. These are so, so big. These are one of the best saltwater schooling fish. They are super, super hardy. It is, they're almost completely bulletproof. These guys can live in brackish environments as well as fully marine ecosystems like the ones that they're living in right now and like the ones that they're gonna go home to in your tank. These guys, the way the light hits off of their bodies when they school, it's just spectacular. These guys eat everything. They always eat the day they come in. A lot of times fish need a couple days to settle in before they eat. Not these monos. They will eat the day you take them home and put them in your tank. These guys are reef safe. So putting them in reef aquariums is going to be a stellar addition to your tank. These guys add color, they add activity, they add movement, they add durability to your tank. There's really not enough good things to say about the monodactylus. So I finally, finally, finally have a purple tang for sale here in the store. And this guy is a phenomenal size, has phenomenal color. He is impeccable. He has got no flaws on him whatsoever. Purple tangs are a zebra soma tang and they are for serious, one of the hardiest saltwater fish that you can possibly ever own, whether it be a fish only tank or a reef tank. This guy is reef safe. He will not go after any coral or your inverts. This guy can be somewhat aggressive, so definitely getting one smaller than the fish in your tank and maybe adding him as one of your later fish is suggested, but I, we cannot say enough good things about the purple tang from the Red Sea. One more quick little reminder before I let you guys go. Uh, there is Obviously, I want to reiterate how cool the saltwater order was this week. We got a lot of fish we haven't had in a long time and a couple rarities that we don't typically have. Uh, I want to also reiterate the coral selection is the best that it's probably been in at least five years here. Um, the amount of different corals coming from different uh, coral guys and uh, also places, just general places, has given us an assortment like you can't believe. Uh, so if you have not shopped fishy business in a while for corals or looked, even if you don't buy anything, take the time to come look at what's here. Uh, there's a lot in every price category. If you knew, or if you haven't even, if you've even been thinking about a tank and haven't even gotten one, uh, now is the time to take a look. Uh, but the biggest thing and the way I'm gonna leave you is the way I've left you the last couple weeks is tanks. Right now, if you're looking to upgrade, this is the best time in the world to buy a tank because the new prices haven't hit us. They haven't gone up yet, especially like what they're going to go up. Um, and we've got every large tank that is readily available in stock. Uh, we got two 200s in this week and they went out the door in one day. Uh, even if you're thinking about going up, but you're not ready to install a whole system right now, it would be a very good idea just to buy the tank and put it in the garage. Um, until you can do the whole rest of it. Right now, I just I can't reiterate that enough. Okay, so all of that's out the way. God bless and have a great week, and we'll see you back here next week.